State Assemblyman John Wisniewski is a Democrat running for governor in the great state of New Jersey, chair of the Assembly Transportation Committee. He is one of many candidates we're in interviewing who want to lead this state because? Because New Jersey needs leadership that's looking out for the middle class and not looking out for the insiders. And the government we've had currently for the past eight years has been doing just that, looking out for the insiders. Define this insider thing. I mean, you were chair of the Bernie Sanders campaign against Hillary Clinton. Is that what this is about? No, no. I mean, look, I was honored to support Senator Sanders because I thought he would have been a better candidate in the general election. He lost the primary. We supported Secretary Clinton. But in that election defeat, we have to recognize that there is a changed attitude in the electorate and that they're not looking for party leadership to dictate to them, trust me, this is who you should vote for. They want to have the privilege of choosing for themselves. And that's what we see happening in the New Jersey governor's race. So let's go through Assemblyman. We've known each other a long time. You were on our previous uh, iteration yeah. of this program, um, Capital Report with my great colleague Raphael P. Roman, and we talked about a whole range of issues, largely about transportation. We may get to that now, but I want to talk about um, one of the major issues the governor talked about yesterday. Um, we're taping this on the 1st of March, um, except this issue will not be resolved um, anytime soon. The pension crisis, 40, 50, 60 billion dollars, the sure. unfunded liability, if you will. Yeah. Public employees who will retire, the state government. Here's the question. If you were governor, how would you solve and address that problem? Well, let's, you have to address the problem by looking at how we got to the problem, because all of the solutions that have been talked about have been trying to capture it in a way that is so small. It took us 20 years mm -hmm. to get to the point where our pension system is in crisis. In 1996, it was 100% funded. Now it's not. And so it's going to take us a long time to get to that point where we could get back to having a fully funded pension system, which most actuaries say is 70 to 80 percent, not 100 percent. This governor has been overstating the problem and underestimating the period of time to solve well, it. Hold on, wait a minute. What do you mean overstating the problem? I so mean, he's, he's the, said, most analysts, excuse me for interrupting a sentiment, most analysts have said that New Jersey has one of the worst funded or most underfunded pension systems in the nation. So how is he? Un well, that that's a description. That's not a. Uh, a numerical fact. And so, yes, it is one of the worst funded. But when the governor starts talking about getting it to 100 percent, you and I both know that you don't need to get it to 100 percent. So he charges a unrealistic number. He says the number is this big and it's impossible to get to because his goal all along has been to do away with the pension system and to not really do away with it. it. Do away with it. He doesn't. Well, he, he has criticized it. He has basically said time and time again that this can't be solved. And so he's creating the problem in a sense that is too big to fix. And then he chooses a very artificially short time horizon within which to fix it. And so, yes, if you choose a number that's 100 percent and you say we have to get it done in 10 years, it's hard to fix. But let me just finish on this note, Steve, is that the one group of people who have no blame in this are the people who went to work every day and every other week had a deduction taken from their checks for the pension. The state of New Jersey mean chose public employees. public employees. The state of New Jersey chose not to honor its obligation. And so for the state to now say to all these employees, look, the state failed in its responsibility, so all of you now have right. to bail us out is wrong. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, okay. we had the governor in many interviews over the years where he said, look, I would like to provide more of the state share that we said we would do, we would put in there, mm -hmm. but we don't have the money. So my question to you is, regardless of debating how bad the problem is, it is a serious problem. Right. If you were governor, where would you find the dollars? How would you find those dollars to increase the amount of the state contribution to the pension fund? Because you are saying public employees are off limits in terms of renegotiating any of those arrangements in terms of benefits. Well, That's what you seem to be saying. Well, we can't blame the public employees well, let's take for, them for the problem the state created. So where are we going to get the money? Go let's ahead. look at the seven plus billion dollars that we have spent during this administration on what I would call corporate welfare. Give backs to businesses in the hope that they would create jobs in New Jersey. We've seen time and time again that that has not worked out as intended. We've wasted that money, money that could have gone to our pension system. Number two, half billion dollars a year going in hedge fund management fees for our pension system. That's two plus billion dollars over the last six years that could have been going in to increase the total capital in that system, to increase the earnings in that system. Mm. Instead, it went to well-connected people who so are shift managing. those dollars shift to the those pension dollars. fund. And let's By the way, would you, raise do would you raise taxes? I asked we may Ambassador Murphy the same question. Would you raise taxes on wealthy, wealthier New Jerseyans 
and dedicate, try to attempt to dedicate those dollars to have state dollars going to the pension fund? It's, it's not a mystery. I've embraced the millionaire's tax in the past, and I would do that as governor. So make it clear what that means. Millionaire's tax is a tax on people earning over a million dollars raising the marginal rate on them and taking that revenue and using it to pay the bills that we haven't been paying. What about if those people decide, Assemblyman, we're out, that's it. New Jersey taxes me too much, I'm moving to Florida, I'm moving somewhere else, I'm moving out west, I'm gone. Well, look, the decisions a governor has to make is what works best for nine million people in New Jersey. Not like the disastrous deal we did on the gas tax where we gave 3,500 families a tax break. 3,500 families on the estate tax we gave them a tax break in return for giving everybody else the privilege of paying a higher gas tax. That's the kind of disequilibrium that we can't allow to go forward. Think about it, Steve. 3,500 families got a tax break that will cost all of us ultimately implement it a billion but, uh, dollars a uh, year. Senator, and I defer to you on so many transportation issues because you know more than most, but the question is this. There are those who argue that if you did not increase that gas tax, which was dedicated specifically to fund the Transportation Trust Fund, which goes to roads and bridges and making sure. us safer, that you would never have had the dollars to make us safer on the roads. Well, we needed to increase the gas tax. But? But the deal, first of all, I believe it was unconstitutional to link both taxes together. But the, the You mean reducing the estate tax? We, we reduced the estate tax. We cut the sales tax one-eighth of a penny. I'm sure everybody appreciates that. The reality is, is we gave away a billion dollars a year in order to raise the gas tax a billion dollars a year. So if you assume for a moment that we had a billion dollars in loose cash that we weren't using, why didn't we use that to fund transportation? The reason is, is it wasn't a billion dollars in loose cash. We still have no idea how we're mm. going to make up for that shortfall. And this is the problem with the budgeting under Governor Christie. School funding. We don't know where we're going to be. Governor Christie has said he wants to work with the Democratic right. leadership in terms of finding a way to deal with this. Yeah. Would you admit that right now, after years of court cases, Abbott versus Burke, other cases, um, those Abbott districts, those 28, or is it 31, I'm not sure the exact number right. of uh, Abbott districts right now, that beyond those urban districts, that there are other suburban districts, other districts you know well, you may be re actually represent some of them. I who, represent urban and suburban districts. But some of the districts who argue that we are not getting the state funding that we deserve under the formula. School Funding Reform Act, which has not been fully funded except for the first year. And therefore, their property taxes are higher than they should be, and those people can't afford it. Therefore, the question is this, long way to question I know, what should be done to improve, if not fix, if not throw out, do something with school funding in the state? Well, I think it's a mistake for a governor in the last nine months of his term to say, let's change the school funding formula so whoever succeeds me is now going to be committed to my vision of funding education. We have a school funding reform act that we've never fully funded except for the first year. Let's try something novel. Let's fully fund it. Does, that does one thing immediately. It provides property tax relief for so many communities who are digging into taxpayers' money because they don't have enough support from the state. Let's see how that works so we can then adjust the formula if there are problems with it down the road. But we've never actually lived under this act as intended. And so for people to criticize the formula when the legislature and the governor has not been willing to fund it, I think is a mistake. What should we do? 30 seconds, what should we do? We should fully fund the School Funding Reform Act. But where should those dollars come from? Should we, again, we more have, money from the millionaires? How many, how many times, no, how many no, different no, ways, Steve, could, Steve, where look, would the money so, come from? So we've got seven and a half billion dollars that we wasted in corporate welfare over the past okay. seven years. We've got a millionaire's tax. We gave away a billion dollars in the estate tax cut. These are funds that but could that's have been already used. dedicated, respectfully. I'm sorry for the, the, that's the, already dedicated. The, the, the estate, estate tax, tax, we gave it away. What do you mean it's already dedicated? Well, you can't get it back. Well, we could reinstate it. So you think undo that? You have to. As governor, you would undo it? You have to. Okay. How about this one? Say the Trump administration, together with the Republican Congress, repeals and, in fact, replaces right. the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, ACA. We don't know what it's going to look like. They don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> that, that's early in March. They say, the president says, it's going to look different. It's going to, everyone who uh, has health whole administration looks different. Well. They say things are going to get a lot better and no one is going to lose their health care coverage in New Jersey and across the nation, you say? I say that they're, I don't know what they're smoking, but it's hard to imagine how they can have a plan and not know what the plan is. I mean, that, that's essentially what they're saying. Trust us, we're going to fix this. Uh, we don't know how we're going to fix it. We don't have the faintest idea on what it's going to look like, but trust us, things will be okay.
What's that, at stake in New Jersey? Who's what's at stake? stake? Well, half a million people who currently get their health care from the Affordable Care Act, which get subsidies of almost a billion dollars. Those folks, there's a young lady expecting her first child today, doesn't know if when the child is delivered, she'll have health care. Or the young man or woman in college today getting health benefits through their parents' policy, they don't know when they graduate if they'll still have health care. These are real problems right. that the Trump administration has thrown into question. And what I think we ought to be doing in New Jersey is creating a single payer health care system. It's doable. We have the resources to do it. Single payer. A single payer health care system. Well, government running with an insurance plan that covers everybody. So before I let you out of here, uh, number one lesson you've learned about leadership in your professional and or personal life that you would take into the governorship is? I think that when you tell people exactly what you think and you defend it, people respect you for it. They may not always agree with you, but they want their elected leaders to be able to tell them exactly what's on their mind and how they'll solve problems. Because for tar far too long, we've had elected leaders who pull the punch, who don't say exactly what they mean. They hope they can prevaricate and, and dodge the issue long enough so they can get in the office and figure out a way around it. But I think our constituents are smarter than we give them credit for. Uh, they want to have an honest debate with their leaders. They want to understand what their leaders believe. And they want an opportunity to disagree and have their voices heard. And our political process today is designed to let's keep the dissent down. Let's not have the discussion. I'll tell you what, um, people are participating in our discussion here, not just with you, uh, something, but other candidates running for governor. By sure. the way, thank you for joining us. Steve, thank you. State of Affairs. Uh, that is it for this edition of State of Affairs. And continue the conversation on social media. Follow me on Twitter at Steve Adubato. See you next time on State of Affairs. See, people want to continue this conversation. Absolutely. Thank you so much. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters, Fedway Associates, the New Jersey Association of Health Underwriters, the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor, Georgian Court University, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey.